I don't like being right up ahead, and I don't like the high buildings and that, because I'm too lonely. It's really lonely. And when I go in through the day, and there's nobody you see, and not a sound, and when you go in the house, it seems as if you were locked in. I never slept in it, never slept in it by myself. One night I tried it, and as soon as it turned dark, I was hearing noises. Myself, I was just fancying I was hearing noises, you see? And of course, <laughs> on with me hat and coat, and we back to my daughters again. When I go in and look around to tell the truth, I sit down and cry because I sometimes think I have nobody. These flats you don't see your soul. Going in or out you don't see your soul, nor hear of soul. I couldn't make that me home just yet. Not yet. Couldn't. I think when you first move in, everything's so brand new. You're thrilled to bits with everything, you know. It's after you've been in a few months that you sort of settle down and you find out it's a little bit tying. You know, it's, it's a long way to get out. And it's the children, as they grow up a little bit, that's the biggest problem, letting them out. You can't let them just go out to play, you know, when you're doing the housework. I mean, they miss the best of the weather half the time if you've got to be in waiting for the rent man, different things like that, you know. They miss a lot like that. Because you dare not let them out, it's too far up. If anything happens to them, you're eight floors away. Their landings, you're not allowed to let them play on the landings. I do let them out, sort of a little while, but then you get complaints if they make a noise. <laughs> Mrs Nibble lived with her three babies, Rosie, Posy and Christopher, in a little house in the bank of the field behind Blackberry Farm. Mrs Nibble was a very busy rabbit too. Because with three children to look after, there was always a lot of washing and cooking to be done. But Rosie, Posy and Christopher were very good little bunnies and played in the grass outside their house while Mrs Nibble was doing the work. And in the afternoon, she put them in the pram and pushed them down to the village to do the shopping. And in the evenings, when they were all... I don't think there's any comparison between the old street neighbourly type of people and what there is now. And I think now you've got to go out of your homes and you've got to go to places to make friends more. The corner shop where we are, the, the customer comes in. She can express her feelings. She'll say, oh, I'm so fed up. Don't bother to serve me, serve somebody else. I'm just having five minutes' peace away from the children. I can tell you their problems, their heartaches. They're getting rid of that burden, but they know once they've told you it's forgot, and you never repeat anything like that. But, I mean, you can't go in a big supermarket and walk up to a strange assistant and say, would you listen to me for five minutes? I've got a problem. Well, you just couldn't do that, but you do that kind of thing. Well, automatically in a little corner shop. We've been here about 11 weeks now. Uh, the people are very, very friendly. They look to the Geordie reputation of being friendly people. Uh, they've been very kind to us since we came here. and Because we're a bit dubious at first with being outsiders. People don't accept you the same. They're different in the sense that they stick together. They're more of a family than uh, neighbours. 
Well, they're like brothers and sisters. What's everything on, Julian? Well, uh, four we're going to be over there with four o'clock. But I've got to go to the job for you, Mr. Wilson. Listen, Pat, enough is good as the beast. I will bring me to the room. Any idea of that, Pat? What's your dinner doing? Bring me to the room. I live here. I think a lot of it is, is through intermarriages. I mean, they're all in some sort of way related with one another, uh, through the ages like. And they all have this little bit of tie amongst each family. So this brings them closer together than what normal people do in, in other parts of the country. <laughs> they don't talk a lot about development because they're not that type of person to worry about development. They seem to live for the time, not the future. They're just out of a, a general good time and live life as it comes sort of thing. There's nothing wrong going to the pawn shop. I mean, they tell you around here, the pawn shop's there and just got a good trade, but it's better than borrowing. You see, a lot of them going with their husband's suits. I was in uh, one day and I heard someone say, if he knew I had this suit long, he ain't go mad. But I've seen people going with um, maybe washing, clean washing shirts and that, and they've had them all ironed. And I mean, they're not new. And they've uh, wrapped them all in the porcelain. She just looked through them and said, I'll give you eight and six on that. I mean, it's only a few shillings they're going for. But I mean, if the people are short, it's handy there to if they can't borrow money, it's better than do with it. We've been on the housing list since we were married, ten years. But um, it's three years ago since we found out the houses were coming down and we've waited since then for a house. We had just the cold water, no hot water, no bathroom. Well, we were lucky with our mother living in the next street. We could go around there for a bath. But the, the kiddies, if the bath was, you had to do one at a time, in a tin. It's just bound to feel strange at first, and leaving the mother, well, it's just one of those things. We must remember that the old environment has been going for a very, very long time. Therefore, all the initial scratches that happened there have gone. It was pre-war, going back even to the slump of the 1920s, or the means test of the 1930s. It was wartime, when there was tremendous togetherness. And this is why I don't think it's fair to compare the two communities. First and foremost, you've got a high rent. Secondly, you've got people living in new houses, therefore, by and large, things have got to be new if they're going to have any standing with their neighbours. Well, that was um, 35 shillings a week, and this one's £4.5. But of course, by the difference of the houses, it's worthwhile. It's a palace compared to the old flat. Living conditions are a good deal better, but whereas in the previous communities you had a distinct area which was your own, like your backyard, you haven't here. I don't suppose an architect realises the tension difficulties he causes by failure to put soundproofing, adequate soundproofing, between flats when you literally can hear every row, almost every word that somebody is saying in the bedroom next door. In certain areas of the estate, there have been upwards of 18 children in one block of flats under the age of about eight. You can imagine the noise that produces. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. 
Amen. Do you notice when you came in on the estate in your ambulance, you probably didn't, the notice saying no ball games allowed on all the greens no. in Langleford Road? It's absolutely kibosh. I don't know where the children are going to play. And this is why I've been really rather concerned about this piece of land here. Mm -hmm. At the moment, the council plan, like it or not, to put a thousand dwellings there. We're going to house 3,000 people. Mm -hmm. And this, to me, will wreck the estate, and it'll turn these into slum properties. Mm -hmm. And I want to try and see if we can keep that as an open playground for children. I really feel if they add anything more to the estate now, it will be catastrophic. You can't expect people to feel part of a unit if it goes much bigger. We used to have lovely times, concerts in the backyard, we used to dress up, have lace curtains. Many a time we got wrong for taking the good ones out, you know, into the backyard. But uh, we used to have really nice times, just charge a halfpenny for coming in. And used to see the concerts, different ones, used to get dressed in the toilet and come out and give a turn. And then we used to have a little cup of tea and sandwiches. My brother and them all used to go to the boys' brigade. We used to all run out on a Sunday morning to hear the boys' brigade band. <laughs> well, you don't see anything like that now on a Sunday morning.